So what drives our breathing? Carbon dioxide or oxygen? There's a large reserve of oxygen in the bloodstream. You don't breed to bring in oxygen. You breed to get rid of carbon dioxide. It's only when oxygen levels drop to 50% of norm will it drive your breathing. So your breathing is driven by carbon dioxide. So the primary stimulus to breathe is the concentration of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is generated as an end product from our metabolism. We move, more, we move our muscles, we generate more CO2. What are the functions of CO2? pH of the blood is 7.365. If we breathe too heavy, well, if it changes to being too acidic and drops below 6.8 or too alkaline rise above 7.8, we die. So carbon dioxide is the primary regulator of pH. And carbon dioxide and water form hydrogen ion and bicarbonate. So the balance of pH is determined by the balance between hydrogen ion and bicarb. And that's taken from a paper called Hyperventilation, the tip of the iceberg. So you see the balance, pH here is 7.4. Here's the balance of bicarb to CO2. But if you offload carbon dioxide, if you breathe too heavy, you're left with an excess of bicarbonate and a deficiency of carbon dioxide. And the pH changes to an alkaline direction, but we said it's so important that the pH is kept within a narrowly defined parameter. So the body will try and bring the pH back to normal very quickly. That's paramount. If it's short-term hyperventilation, if it's just you had, you know, you're driving down the road and some guy crossed you and you, you, you have a little bit of a cursing match with each other, short-term stress, yes, you'll breathe heavier, but because it's short-term, afterwards your breathing will normalize, so the pH will normalize, so it's not an issue. But if it's stress that's going on for a couple of weeks, that's enough that breathing cannot go back to normal, and as a result, pH is alkaline, so the body will dump bicarbonate to bring the pH back to normal. Does that make sense? When that happens, the person is stuck in a chronic state of hyperventilation, chronic. And that is so easy to happen, so easy. But the end result of this is that the buffer, it takes very little over breathing to drive the person into symptoms. And if they hold their breath to CO2, their tolerance to carbon dioxide is very low, so they'll tend to be a lot more breathless. So if you have a child with a partially blocked nose and you tell them to close the mouth, and if this has taken place, well, the child is going to feel suffocated. They're going to feel the need for air, so they're going to open their mouth. So unless you address or reverse that change, it's going to be difficult to make the permanent switch from mouth to nasal breathing. Does that make sense? So, dust to chronic hyperventilators, pH regulation is finely balanced. Diminished acid, the consequence of hyperventilation, is balanced against the low level of blood bicarbonate maintained by renal excretion. And in this equilibrium, small amounts of overbreathing induced by emotion can cause large falls of carbon dioxide and consequently more severe symptoms. So the cushion, the cushion has been severely reduced. Bore effect. How is oxygen released from the red blood cells? 98% of oxygen is carried by hemoglobin molecule. And in order for oxygen to be released from the red blood cells, it needs the presence of carbon dioxide, dysphosphoglycerate, or increased temperature. If you're breathing too heavy, you're getting rid of carbon dioxide, oxygen is, the bond between oxygen and the red blood cells is stronger. So there's reduced oxygenation. The heavier you breathe, the less oxygen that's being released to tissues and organs. Another factor is constriction by smooth muscle of arterial vessels. Heavy breathing, you will often experience it as you may feel lightheaded. Again, you've got reduced blood flow to the brain. Every one millimeter drop of CO2 will reduce blood flow to the brain by up to 2%. It is no coincidence that people who breathe with their mouth wide open often wake up fatigue. And many of you here exhibit Many symptoms. I'm not going to make any comment on anybody's breathing, but I've seen a little bit of sighing, a little bit of chest breathing, a little bit of heavy breathing. How do you sleep? If you sleep with a mouth open, do you wake up full of beans in the morning? Or are you waking up tired? Not everybody that has their mouth open during their sleep will wake up tired, but the vast majority will. 
how is oxygen? All I show people, they come in to me, I show, listen, how is oxygen being released from the red blood cells? How can you breed optimally to ensure that you're getting adequate oxygenation? <laughs> So to oxygenate your body, breed less. Or in other words, don't overbreed. Don't overbreed. We've already seen that our asthmatic population overbreed. For 10 years I've worked with many people, kids, adults, 80% of them are fatigued all of the time. They're fatigued all of the time. You will see this too, um, you know, if you have questionnaires and you're, you're looking at your mouth breathing kids, you'll see other issues that will come into play.